tips to reduce dog marking. Guys, I'm Jessica, the Fray Family Coach. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for being here. I, again, am Jessica, the Fray Family Coach. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. In this video, and in all of my videos, I'm talking about dog training, dog behavior, positive dog training, canine enrichment, canine nutrition. If that is why you're here, go ahead and click that subscribe button. It's right down there, somewhere down there, red. If you are returning to my channel, thank you so much for being here. If you're new, do click that subscribe button. Once you click the subscribe button, a bell will pop up. And when that bell pops up, click all notifications. That way, YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. So let's get right into this video, tips to stop marking behavior in dogs. So this is actually a second video in the series. There's another video, I will link it below, about how to determine the difference between if your dog is urinating, trying to like empty their bladder, or if they're marking, because it is very important to distinguish between the two before you start a treatment plan, because there are two vastly different things you need to do depending on what your dog is actually doing. If your dog is trying to eliminate the their bladder, then we're talking about potty training. If your dog is marking, um, which is not trying to eliminate their bladder, but there are actually a few different reasons, which I discussed in that video, I keep going this way, but it's down in the description, the link to that video. Check that video out and then come back to this video. So let's talk about some tips to reduce marking behavior in your dog if you have determined um, that your dog is in fact marking. So it's important to understand that in dogs, marking behavior is completely normal. Of course, we don't like it, but it is completely normal. So these are unique odors that your dog is giving off that contain pheromones. So they're like a doggy fingerprint, basically. So if you have determined that you do have a dog that is marking, of course you want to figure out any way you can to stop the behavior or at least drastically reduce the behavior. The very first thing you're gonna wanna do is employ behavioral training to stop the marking. What does that mean? What do I mean by behavioral training? So what we wanna do is teach our dog that is marking the areas where it is okay to mark and then the areas that it's not okay to mark. One of the things that you learn when training dogs is that dogs have really natural behaviors, innate behaviors in them, and every dog is different, obviously, and we treat each dog differently because they are all different. However, when your dog is doing something that is very natural to them, the best way to train is not to try to completely remove the behavior, but to tame the behavior and work that behavior in a way that is manageable in your life, in your dog's life. So for instance, if we have a dog that's digging and you don't want your dog to be digging, well, obviously you don't want him digging up your flower beds and things like that. So we train and we, we re enforce the behavior to dig in a certain area that has been set up for your dog where they can get all of that natural instinct and energy out and let them dig in an area that is okay for them to dig while discouraging behavior in our flower beds and other areas we don't want them digging. The very same thing is true when we talk about marking behavior in dogs. So what we wanna do is discourage marking in areas where they should not be marking, which is inside the house, anywhere inside the house, and redirect to an area where it is okay for them to mark. For instance, maybe you have a section in your backyard or your front yard, or even just going down the street for walks. Maybe you have certain areas where it is going to be okay for them to use their marking behavior without harming anything inside of your home. So you actually want to train using positive reinforcement, discourage marking in the areas you don't want them marking and encourage it in areas where it is okay for them to do so. Second tip is, and I talk about this in pretty much every dog training video I have ever done because it is the one of the most important things for every person with a dog to learn, do not punish. Anytime you punish your dog, you are going to wind up 
with an effect that is the exact opposite of what you are hoping for. You are not going to suppress any behavior using punishment. You're only going to exacerbate the problem, not only the problem itself, but in the trust that your dog has for you, your dog is gonna be less likely to trust you, less likely to listen to you, less likely to follow your lead because they don't trust you. So absolutely 100% without a doubt, no matter what problem you're dealing with with your dog, do not, do not punish your dog. So if, what do we do instead, right? We need to use positive reinforcement, be patient. Even if you're saying, okay, my dog can mark outside be very specific, choose certain areas that you take your dog to. That way in your dog's mind, they cannot do it here. They're not supposed to do it here. It is okay to do it here. Don't just open up the hole outside, even though you know for the most part it's gonna be okay. You really want to hone in and define a specific space or area where you can t lead your dog to. If they, If you notice they're about to mark, you can lead your dog to that specific area and let them know that this one specific area is okay for them to mark. And we use positive reinforcement when they do, meaning we reward it when they mark in that one certain area that it is okay for them to mark and discourage marking in the other areas. Third thing you can do is to put your dog, put their harness on, attach their leash and take them for a walk. This is going to be especially, especially great for dogs who are territorial markers. So what they can do instead of marking inside of your home, on their walk, they can stop and mark all kinds of different things along the path of their walk and they'll be less likely to mark inside of your home. Fourth thing you can do is manage their environment. So if you really have a problem with a dog marking in your home, you don't wanna give them free reign of your home because you want to be able to monitor their behavior. You wanna be able to pinpoint when you see that they're going getting ready to mark so that you can intervene and take them out to that specific spot that you have selected to allow them to mark on. So don't give them free reign of your house. Make sure they are close to you or in a safe spot if you can't be with them, if you have to leave the home, but manage their environment. Of course, we talked in the other video, it actually is a myth that your dog, whether they're male or female, will only mark if they are unaltered. That's not true, it is a myth. Um, there are appropriate and inappropriate times to spay or neuter an animal, and I am a very big advocate for putting the dog's medical needs first. So. Uh, you may want to wait until they are fully grown for a large dog that could actually be up to two years of age. Um, you want to make sure all of all of their bones have grown together and they are completely, a, you know, all physiologically, they're an adult. There are also alternatives to a traditional spay and neuter that are easier on the body and you can discuss those with your veterinarian. But it is one of the things that can help with marking behavior. Number six, if you have already implemented everything we've talked about in this video, belly bands can be one of your best friends. They are not a crutch, however. In fact, I have talked to multiple people who have put belly bands on their dogs and it has made them lazy. And they won't even go out and potty because they know that they've got the belly band on, they can go right in there, no big deal, no muss, no fuss. So I would really limit the use of a belly band, but it is an option in extreme cases. Another tip that you're gonna really wanna implement, and this goes for marking, it goes for um, mistakes in potty training, any and everything, use, an in, use a cleaner with enzymes to actually break down the urine in your fabrics because you wanna make sure that there is no trace of pheromones uh, any type of odors and even things that you may not be able to smell, your dogs can smell. So use a cleaner with enzymes and I'll put a link in the description below to one of my favorites. It's uh, Nature's Miracle and really, really do a great job cleaning up any area where your pet has urinated or marked. Uh, the eighth tip, I know I'm not numbering all of these, sorry guys, but we're on our eighth tip. <laughs> Address any separation anxiety issues that your dog may have. So if your dog is marking when you leave the home, it could be a sign of separation anxiety. And we talked about that in the first part of this video series 
Uh, separation anxiety is very serious, is something you don't want to take lightly and you do want to act on. I have another video on my channel talking about how to help your dog manage with separation anxiety and I will link that below as well. So if you do feel like your dog is experiencing separation anxiety, definitely check out that video. Get some tips, tips and tricks and start working to help relieve the anxiety your dog may be having. The ninth tip is to keep other animals out of your yard, especially if you have a territorial marker. They are going to be really, they are really gonna wanna mark over any other animal scent. So the more you can keep other animals out of your home and out of your yard, the better it will be for your dog. Um, and it should go without saying in this video because I definitely mentioned it in the first video in the series, but definitely discuss any inappropriate urination with your veterinarian because there could be any number of medical conditions that could be causing your dog to urinate inappropriately in your home, whether it is toileting or whether it is marking, there could be a medical condition underlying the behavior that is happening. So you definitely wanna discuss that with your veterinarian. And last but not least, patience is gonna be your best friend. I talk about patience, it's one of my seven canine commandments. Uh, but that are in my book, which you can grab a copy of my book. Also, I the link is in the description. Seven Miracle Steps to Train Your Dog. Again, the link is in the description. Grab your copy of the book. I talk a lot about patience because it is one of the seven canine commandments that I teach to all of my in-home clients. Uh, it is very, it is the foundation of training that I teach to all of my in-home clients before we move on to anything else. So do grab your copy of the book. Um, and that is gonna wrap up the tips for how to deal with marking in a dog. So let me know, post in the comments. First of all, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, but go ahead and post in the comments if any of these tips um, rang a bell with you. If you're like, I can do that, I can do that. Let's get on this right now. Post in the comments, let me know. Let me know what issues you're having with your dog. If you have any questions outside of the subject matter of this video, post them below as well, because I could just make my next video to answer your question. I'd love to hear from you guys, so do post in the comments below. Also join my group, that way we can actually have a discussion and help you and your dog. The link is in the description below for my group. Go ahead and join it and Thank you so much for being here. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Give this video a big thumbs up. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.